we're gonna start with um, the planets, Uranus, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Mars. Um, one of the things that I want to make um, light of is um, the reason why Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are traveling together is because we're coming into a in time segment of a cycle. And so two years ago, um, many of us were in a place where if we look back, uh, we probably were experiencing what we are experiencing now. And um, what a lot of people don't understand this is that it's uh, quite a few uh, situations that's on the table with um, mankind. And that is number one, um, freedom for the people because um, there is an illusion. So I better put Pisces in here. Okay. Um, Pisces is um, the 12th house. But anyway, the freedom for the people. So when governments were um, created, um, they said that they were creating the governments throughout time for the people, as our money says, we the people for the people. But out of 300 and some years, even the Bible says in Acts, that there would be a time where there would be a people that would become free um, after 300 and I think it's 64, 65 years, it's in Acts six or seven. That has not happened. There has been a change mentally um, and physically concerning um, physical and mental uh, um, constraints, meaning um, imprisonment. So you have physical imprisonment like the slaves, but then it shifted to mental imprisonment. And as you think about this, um, what you want to do is find yourself in a place where you possibly um, took a hold to those um, illusions because one of the things that people don't know is that Pisces is um, the Christ age. It's the Christian age. But then uh, the other thing that people don't know is, is that the Christian age was of the dark ages. Now, it did not become light when we came into the world. And this is something that we really need to become aware of because the Piscean age is not ever going to be about light. It's never going to be about light. There was Jesus who came and became illuminated to a, a place where um, he gave the baton to someone called the water bearer. And this is very important because I believe the reason why we are not becoming free is because every one of us in religion um, foundations or religious foundations took on the mask which is Pisces, um, which is Jesus era. And Jesus is not a bad person. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the illusion that was incorporated into the Christian concept is what has caused us problems. So when you look at this time and people will say, well, what is that, that gonna do to help me? Well, I tell you what, if you don't study, long you gonna study wrong because our people have been in entrapments for ever so long and if you do not go back and unbind the ties of your forefathers you're going to ever so long be bound that means that you need to study because the people that created the dark side of christianity which was created in the roman time gave a lot of fallacies that we have followed in our churches now, that is not to say that our churches are bad or even that the Bibles that we read and, you know, the books that we read, because it's not just in Christianity that there was an illusion. The illusions are here every day. 
But if you begin to look at and ponder what I'm saying, then some of those illusions, even that we have lived in mentally, which are prison um, thought processes will begin to break because we thought it should be this way. And even when our parents or someone in the community thought it should be that way, that's not necessarily so, right? All right, so Pisces is about darkness because it's an ocean type of energy. That means that it's dark underneath there unless you take goggles that have a light. You know that, right? No different than the era. So the era permits illusions. Many people are crying right now because they don't understand how they got into situations that they were into, um, all of us. And it's because of the way that the social um, atmosphere, the construct has led us. But if you are led by masses, then you will be led astray. That's sheep. Until you get your own information from the spirit, which is where I get it from Christ, the Christos, but it's not outside of me, it's within me, then I don't know what to do or what to say. So here we start today, and we want to put the foundation down and say that Pisces is an era of the dark ages. When the Roman wars were being fought, Christians were um, girded up, just like it says, put on the whole armor, and they had the Christian insignia there, but it was the dark ages because it was the time of war. It did not end when we came into the world because we could see the light outside. It's just now coming to an end. And even illusions are coming to an end that people want to keep. They want to live by the way that it was when we got this freeing energy that is showing up and it started showing up uh, actually maybe within the last 10 years, especially for those of us that have this energy in our charts. It was showing us something futuristic. It was showing us innovation. It was showing us what we had to practice at least 10 years ago, I've come to the understanding of seeing to practice then and bring it over into now. All right. So that energy is Uranus. And um, Uranus is actually, the it, it's like the father of the universe. Um, Uranus fathered, when we go into Greek mythology, fathered uh, Saturn, who is Kronos. Um, also the archetype of the Capricorn energy. Now we have the sun and I want to get to that because this is some important information. When you go into Hebrews, I don't have the scripture, but it's in Hebrews 10, and it talks about going beyond the veil. If somebody could look that up and type in the um, scripture while I'm talking, it would be wonderful. So it's in Hebrews 10, and it tells you about going beyond the veil. So Jesus represented in Christianity the son. They said the S-O-N in the Bible, but you, okay. You can see it um, written in Malachi as the S-U-N. So we know that it's not physically the son of God, but it had to do with the universe because the sun is up in the sky. And when I say that, it said that um, the healing would come through the sun, and that's in Malachi 4. Uh, with wings, healing would come through the sun, S-U-N. And so when you read whatever religion you come from, if you are paying attention from your uh, inner spirit, the consciousness, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to speak to you and tell you the truth. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. There is no truth that was really founded in the Piscean age because the Piscean age was about illusions. Um, for instance, everything that had to do with seers was punishable by crime. Now, why would you punish seers and prophets? Joan of Arc, why would you burn them? And then you would bring in 
um, an understanding of divination uh, being um, of witches. Well, what is a witch? I mean, really, because Christians pray against each other. You understand? And they also, they burn candles. They just don't tell nobody. So I want to know, because I want, you know, in all of this here, you're going to have to break the illusion in order to get to the place that I am. Because breaking the illusion means that when you go to Hebrews and you see that Jesus' body was broken and um, you could go through uh, the body, that's the way that I saw it beyond the veil because his body is the veil your body is the veil if you cannot see beyond the body you can't see the sun in the person the s-u-n the heart of the person right and so when you're looking at leo leo's transformation as any of the rest of these archetypes have to do with getting to the heart of matters and the heart of matters is in this time we are not just called, but we're feeling the press of going beyond the veil. The veil has so much more for us to learn because many people thought in Christianity that once you got to Jesus and people are on the pulpit praying and, and they're up there, they're giving a message that that was it. But you got to go beyond the veil because as you get the word, the word is at the heart of uh, what is true and in the heart of the word and what is true you find that the universe is waiting on you the universe is the way that the word came forth you see unite verse uni verse una anything that you have una with means that there's a unity to come right and so when everyone speaks the same words, then there's going to be power. You know, even if we begin to say prosperity now, prosperity now, it's going to come because there is a frequency of unity speaking the same thing with the same heart. And the other thing about that is that it's going to encourage people. Why? Because you are in a group while you're saying it, and the group holds a energy that takes people up higher. You know, you're not by yourself. So you're not in the Piscean age now where it was about individual and self-centeredness, and you understand. So now what's happening is some people realize it and some people do not. Groups are being called not just by people but by the universe because we the people for the people cannot do a damn thing the only people that can do anything for anybody is groups that have been through hell and came back for a minute and then been back to hell again so when you get groups together you have a majority and sometimes they are minorities. That doesn't mean that it's a skin color. It means that there was a separation and divide to take something away from people and conquer them. Divide and conquer is what the Piscean age was about. Yes. So you find yourself learning because in the Roman wars, were they fighting for minorities? No, they were not. None of the people at this time, even your political leaders have stood up for you. And a lot of times, you know, when I taught, even when I was teaching the scripture, I couldn't, I mean, the word from straight from the Bible, I couldn't understand how this was going to come to pass, but I felt the liberation and the freedom that we can have, but we cannot have it without understanding the things that they understood, such as all of the stars in the constellations are named by Greek gods and goddess, yes. And if you don't know that, then you go and you study it for yourself. So all of my life, I've had experience with Greek gods, from Pegasus starting up at a young child, and I would hear God saying, oh, you know, I gave you the sun, the moon, and the stars, and this would be repetitious until I finally got it, because I would see these gods. And if I gave you the sun, the moon, and the stars, then that means that you understand what's in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yes? 
But because we had forefathers that had mm, taught our people in the name of Jesus, not to study the sun, the moon, and the stars, we have been left behind. But then there's a time when there's energy that comes in and it says, no, there's a game changing that's going on here. And you and the people that are with you will be a part of it. And you will show them how to master what they created for you not to master. So Uranus is a constellation, as Saturn is a constellation. And when I go back to the beginning, I, I brought up that there were three, three powerful planets traveling together. Now, when they told us about the sun, what they did is gave us an illusion again, right? Christian era, the sun. And that doesn't take anything away from the sun because the sun is traveling with them every day and it lights up the world. The sun lights up the world. There's a song that uh, speaks of that. Now, the other thing about the sun is that the sun can take you into levels of illumination. And in that illumination, you begin to find the truth. You see, the sun has a dual work, just as Uranus, Capricorn, and all the rest of the planet energy. I said it has a dual force. And if we don't master it, or if we don't even know this, then what happens is we're stuck. We're stuck in the illusion. Because we came here in a time when they were saying that the Piscean age was the age of Christ. But no one said that there were going to be an age where Christ was going to pass the baton. He really did. because. In, 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 in Luke 21, he tells you about the wars and famine that's going on right now, the preparation. That scripture or that, that chapter came to me when I was going through the hardest time in my life in my early or mid-20s, the first dark night of the soul. But it prepared me to see a time of my personal life going through a hell that the world would begin to go through. Not to say that I didn't believe that the world was going to go through hell because I'm sure that all of us on here have had an inclination of something coming that would free our people. Now, your people cannot become free if they don't know the truth. That means that people have to study because the only energy that can bring freedom is Uranus. Now, it just don't happen upon you. It comes through consciousness. Consciousness means that you're open to release your old thoughts. That means that if you're fixed on something in the way that you thought it should be and it would come, it may not come that way. It may be coming from another way. I'm a witness to God, you said it. And I don't care, but you better do it, right? Anyway. I'm not saying that I don't believe. I'm just becoming a little bit more flexible with some things and saying, humans think a certain way. That means that I could perceive a word such as the Piscean age and Jesus being it. Because they said nobody else would come and be able to touch his shoes. No other re religions was even the truth. It was only him. And I said, that just don't make sense because there's other people that live in other areas that ain't even experienced him. It just don't make sense. So, you know, I'm like the devil's advocate. I'm going to provoke, and you know, sometimes people don't like that, but I don't really care because if you don't provoke people to think, even today, then they will always be in the same mindset. Some people are gonna be in the illusion of, of Pisces, and, and here we are at a breaking point of a new era. We're going over into a new era just as Saturn is going direct on the 29th of this month. But some people have been feeling a need to break free and they don't even understand what's happening. They don't understand because they don't research themselves to know 
the freedom that lives within them. So you can't be free outside if you don't get free within. Even today, I will tell you, I'm battling with some things. That means that I'm battling to figure out within me how to get free of it, that, what. Because the suggestion to man is always that we do things a certain way. If you don't do it a certain way or have it a certain way, then, you know, society, it, it looks at you this way and that way. I don't really care about that. What I do care about is mental freedom, because if I get mental freedom completely and I can agree with it spiritually, mentally and physically, then that means that I can prosper. It's the idea and the fixation. And, you know, the thing about this is, is that your teachings are always going to evolve because you're going to continue to learn. Spirit, as long as you're genuine and you're searching for the truth, and that truth is going to come through you as an individual first before it's going to hit the masses because you got to live it before you give it to the masses, especially when you are here to give understanding about what truth is. A person or people that do not live the words that they give to others, that's a fraud. I'm going to tell you that because you cannot tell people what to do if you're not living it. It's not possible. It's error. It's just like you got political leaders. You got leaders on the podium that's leading right now. They want you to live by a certain way. They want you to pay taxes, but they don't pay taxes. That's error. And so on and so forth. So when you begin to desire and really look at Uranus, and you can find Uranus in your chart, you are going to look at it and you're going to say, how do I incorporate this energy into my life and allow it to bring me into freedom? Because some of the reasons that we have been stuck is because we've been living in the energy of the sun that we are, the ascending, or the moon. And one of the three is rejecting energy that is trying to come in to show us other avenues of life because you got 12, you got 12 houses here. And those 12 houses represent how you're going to live as those planets flow through your chart. So with three of them that's been in retrograde, they are showing us or they've showed us some things from two years ago. And that two years ago is coming over here. I would say that they're even going back as far as 2008 and 2009 and showing us some things because Pluto was already in Capricorn as of 2000 and 2009, 2008 and 2009. Gemini was in the North Node in 2000 and... Um, Three, 2002, uh, 2003, just as it is now. So you could find information that you were living out there. And it's not to beat yourself up, but to look at timelines so that you can begin to identify with the change, but also maybe changes that you needed to make from that time, right? Changes that you needed to make from that time that you had no idea you would come upon the same energies in some way or another, and they would affect you again in the same manner, which is where we get patterns from. The energies are telling us about the patterns. And, you know, it does not leave away from prophecy because I can see where prophecies that I gave and others have given me line up with the energies. The thing is, is that we have different training foundations that God will take us into for the betterment of man, such as Pisces having to do with mental health, addiction, but it's also a house of institution. It, it's not just a house. It is a, a place 
and energy that institution no lies you. It gives you experiences of institution, meaning jail, lock up mentally. And if you don't escape it, some people can be mentally confounded to the restrictions of Pisces energy, which is the Christ era until they find the epiphany moment or the catalyst that gets them free. Now, isn't that something? Because we have America built in the Christian age. And I brought up the Roman Wars. But I also said that all of the sky is dictated by Greek God. Now, isn't that something? Now, I'm not a liar, because you can go and look it up for yourself. It's not just that I had the experience with them. It was just one day that I finally got the epiphany of what it was saying. It was an epiphany. I was like, well, why, why I keep seeing them? Yes. Um, I just had a quick question about that, Ms. Kim. Um, when you're saying Greek gods, I keep thinking that it's, you know, coming from the West. And so immediately I, I think, well, what, what about, you know, like African gods or Asian gods? And I, I'm not sure if you can answer that, but how do they yeah. sort of fit with this Greek mythology? So with the Greek mythology, you know that you're going to have to take it to the next level. And I haven't unfolded it all because here um, we have the need to look at the Western way, right? So getting into Venus, Venus has been known as Mother Mary, also as Isis, and as Hathor. And when you begin to, now I haven't went into all of those areas, but you know that if, if Venus is Isis, and Isis was married to um, uh, Osiris, right? Then here is that lineage and you can begin to follow it because my uh, understanding and awakening is um, in the sky. I had it, right? That how could you study earth and not study heaven? Um, I did not put all of this together as far as the Greek gods and um, probably until Perseus came to me uh, the beginning of September. So when you go and you look at them, you can look at the chronological aspect because I haven't broke that part down, but I do know that um, all of these deities and the energies are lining up with the Eastern way. It's just that you're going back because Solomon, um is in this here and solomon and david line up with saturn and then you go over to um is islam well no it's um where they worship the um the cube and that's in in that over um help me yo sarah in that over in your home uh country of in Egypt? the middle east mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there you have it that there was something the, that was the started. Kachina. Okay, you have it that something was started and it, it navigated and it came over here. But the reason why it came over here, if there's Greek gods, this is the question that we asked ourselves: Why did they? Why wasn't it named after Roman gods? All right, now that's on the table. Because what you want to do is always go back. And you can go back and navigate it uh, to Venus. And Mary has to do with Christianity. And this is where you're going to get the unfoldment of it all. It doesn't matter if they're in the sky, but these gods lead you back to antiquity, which is what you're asking. So if Venus was Isis, energy and this is true because i've had experiences with this goddess and hathar then you're going to go back and say who were the gods and goddesses that actually 
um, walked with them? And that's where you're going to get your answer. Um, for me, Perseus, he came up uh, this month and I found the meteor showers. And because there were meteor showers there, um, let me go back. I kept hearing his name and, and then seeing him, but then the day after I finally started looking at information about him, I seen the owl that was with him. And that's why it's important for you to follow your own intuition and information because when I did, that's when I finally said, well, why? Okay, and the answer came and it was, okay, his constellation is up there. And Zeus is getting ready to wake up because Zeus is Jupiter, who is also, after the fact, Jesus. So you see where um, chronologically the gods are evolving into another type of religion. And um, what that did for me was help me to see the era more clearly that we were going into because within the last two months, I heard it's just an illusion. And just because it says it's just an illusion doesn't mean that I got it. I was like, why you keep saying that? And I, I started hearing the song until I got it. So the Pisces uh, new moon at the beginning of the month was a catapulting into that uh, understanding, which said, now you're breaking through the illusion. So what are we breaking through the illusion into? Into the age of clarity, the age of uh, the water bearer, the age that truly the spirit pours out on man, which is called water. The washing comes so that man can hear. So a lot of things that we learned in the Christian era was number one, before time. And it doesn't say because there is an elusiveness to um, the Christian faith that it's, it's not real. It's anything is as real as you make it. The thing about this here is, is that people get stuck in religions and they don't follow their heart where their heart is telling them to go to unlock the next level for them. Um, and why don't they do that? Because of the mass social um, brainwashing. And that's not just in religion, but this is where we're at. Why? Because when I look at what we're talking about, there's times when I've been on planes with um, Aristotle, Newton. I've seen this and I'm like, okay, why am I seeing this? Well, it's because there's information in all of us that will take us back to unlock the secrets of who we are. Right now, we're going into a time where if we really get down into it, we will get back a lot of the, the mathematics of uh, where we actually created back in Egyptian time. Even get this, where we were told that Egypt was Lodibar. That was to keep us from understanding the dynamics of our power. Egypt is not Lodibar. That's where everything is that began everything as far as we know. When you go back and you begin to research, you got pyramids over there that no one can identify with how they were built. But here in studies about Uranus, Uranian energy, even Black Panther tells you about uranium. Yes, listen, I didn't wanna go see the movie, so I saw it at home. And when we were coming on today, I said, okay, we're going into the sector of Thanos. And I know that um, uh, Talana probably would be laughing because you know, that's the truth. I didn't want to go to the movie. But when I sit and I watch the sci-fi movies and you got these stones, all of this stuff is originating from back in the an antiquity time. So when you have dreams or, you know, you as myself, I woke up or been in a, a meditation and I'm sitting in front of um, pyramids. 
And I know that there's um, many over there. It's not just one. But if I'm just sitting there and I've never been there, uh, there's something significant that put me there because I've never been there. It means that your soul is taking you back into places that you had no idea of in this life. And what that means is, is that the part of prophecy in man that is able to speak and talk of things such as is God. That part of you that has dreamt about things and went to other places is God. Now, as the water bearer pours out, it lessens the qualifications of the flesh. Because the water bearer is all about the outpouring of God. So when I went back, or when I go back and I, I say Uranus, Uranus is the father of Saturn. And I did not know this until I began to study um, because all of this information was bombarding me this month about illusions and Perseus, the owl, going on and saying, I identify with the Greek gods. Why do you identify with them? Because now you've got something. People can't run from what you're telling them about heaven now. Now we can go further. Do you agree? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma All right. So when someone is telling you that, then you can take them to the Bible because it's needed for edification. Because if you go to church and you're talking about the rivers of life, where do you think they're coming from? Yes, they're coming from within. But the within inside of us has a sun, a moon, and the stars. We all have this. We are products of the universe. You know, people have had a struggle with talking about the universe. Is it God or is it? But there is a beginning and an end to all things, Alpha and Omega. And then they tell you that you should not uh, be a part of sororities, but God is Alpha and Omega. Let's just identify with some truth here so that we can break the illusions. It's okay for some people to be a part of sororities and fraternities, but it's not okay uh, for you to talk about uh, that um, in some kind of increments. But then the Bible tells us and Christianity says that um, the, the Christ is Alpha and Omega. God, I am the beginning and I am the end. So what is the problem with the fraternities and the sororities. Is this something that they're teaching you? Now, this is when Uranus comes in because the energy begins to say that what difference does it make? What harm are they doing to be in a fraternity or a sorority? Is this organized mindsets or consciousness, someone dictating? How far do you go with this? So coming back to the Aquarian age, Uranus, again, is noted. When you start studying and you really get deep into it, meaning don't just settle to go to Google and look at something and it says yada, yada. Go on and dissect it to look because there is a beginning and there is an end. And in the beginning, God created. And so God has a frequency uh, of how it creates. And that frequency has to do with how we're able to speak things into divine order or come together in groups again, which is um, orchestrated through Uranus and the cooperation of Saturn because Saturn rules um, Capricorn and Aquarius. Now, the other part is the relationship that the sun has with it and the moon, because these are important principles. In the upcoming days, there are a lot of, um, um, the Quinn Cunks, and that means that there's a, a, quite a few planets and the ones that I named that are going to be oppositional to each other. And it's like, I feel like it's um, a story um, that has to play out 
in order for the heavens to come to an order of domination to bring that order here. Because you got people that make laws, Saturn and Jupiter, that are not for the people. And so the illegal aspects are definitely, we see that being shown, but this is how uh, it's orchestrated from the energy of the heavens. When the Piscean age was going on, there was an illusion. So a lot of people were bamboozled, you know, um, as we know it, We've paid over in abundance with taxes, with mortgages, with uh, lights. Who in the hell told them to create a light bill? I mean, really. So you capitalize off of the people everywhere. And you could go on and on and think about it. And I remember when the pandemic came in and I was saying to some people that, well, you should just, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go back to work. And, you know, everybody should not do it, you know, just for instance. And they were like, but we'll lose everything. And I was like, how could you lose everything if everybody didn't go back to work? People don't think. Because if you didn't do anything, all of America, just like T.I. said, there would be no way that they could do anything. Businesses and the buildings would not be in jeopardy. Everybody is afraid of a system. But no one understands that when you get a majority of people together that understand their power, which is the people, the people have been powerless up until now. You've been powerless up until now. You and I could take the power and begin to work with it for our own good and we would see how to uh, move in this time and age for freedom because you got people that are going to be working in Uranian energy superiorly. Think about over the years why a computer was created technology, the phones, all of this is evolutional, right? No one thinks about the fact that their mind has to be freaking evolutional. The mind has to become innovative. Why? Because we are the ones that uh, receive the information for the evolution. It's not always that uh, we restarting and re-redoing. Why you want to keep redoing? I said that earlier this year. I don't want to redo. I need an evolution in my life because I'm sick of the same old stuff and the same old type of energies, which means that I need an evolution within me. Now, the evolution is apparent because if I don't get on some new understanding and energy of information, I cannot evolve. See, first I'm informed so that I can perform. That's the magic of it. I don't just want to tell people about what's going on. We gotta become what's going on. But it's first up in the heavens down here. You know, why do you bind and loose if you cannot understand that what's made in heaven has to be brought into the earth and vice versa? They work together. I know the reason why you're not told that they work together or how to work them is because you are not informed so that you would not adequately be able to produce. The almanac tells us about the same thing that the Bible says, planting your gardens, how the sun and the moon, it, it, how it functions, where it is every day. I remember listening to the, um, what's his name, um, Yosera, um, the, the guru. Um, Sadhguru? Yes. He was talking about following the moon. And he said that if the people got back to it, there would be so much more, um, pretty much harmony. I believe that now. I believe that we as a people, because that's all we had was the sun and moon to navigate the time. People became so evolved and the Bible says that, you know, that you got seasons, but there's nothing new under the sun. How about that? 
under the sun. And you, you know, you think about this here, and the moon brings the tide in, the contraction of the water, the waves, is bringing in a message. But it's also bringing in a message that it vibrates with us. This is energy, the frequency, and all of that has to do with Uranus. So I don't get back to um, these um, scientists, Aristotle and these Newton and, and, and people like this here. These were all men, by the way. Did you, you understand what I'm saying? Everybody I talked about is men, not many women. Not many women. But women were a part of power in different ages. And women are coming back into that power again. And it's not a power that is to dictate, but it's to balance out. It's energy that's balancing out. And that's where Venus is. What a lot of people don't know is that Venus is at the center of everything that goes on. Because She's in the first house, no, the second house, I'm sorry, and the seventh house. There's only like two or three planets that, that rule um, two or three planets, which is something to think about. Then you have the sun and the moon that is giving messages every month to a different planet, which is like phenomenal. But I feel like if my energy is not right, as a Capricorn Pisces rising with the moon in Scorpio, then I can mess up a lot of things, and I have. But I'm, I'm good with telling the truth. Because when I look at the information, and even as it has evolved from you know, the Bible, I gave you Bible uh, information to line up with Uranus. And I can with Saturn, because Saturn is the Lord of the harvest who Jesus was again in the Bible. What does that mean? You can see how the energies are incorporated for times and ages. Because there was, um, the Greek mythology was a time, Socrates was in his time, this time. But here you are with Jesus and he speaks Socratical, right? Yes. Jesus and the parables are a Socratical type of speaking. All of this here is something that many people won't think about, but I do because it unlocks keys for me that says, okay, this didn't just start here. Because see, I used to love Socrates when I was a little girl. What do you do with that? And so there was something that went on with me that I brought some energy in from Greek, um, the Greek mythological, you know, era. Maybe I was reincarnated at some time in that era. But my thing is, is that I could see when I read that Jesus' way of teaching was Socratical. And that means that Jesus didn't give people the answers. He provoked them to think. That's very important because if you don't get people to the place where they can think for themselves, they'll always be powerless. Now that's enough for you to go home and say, okay, I'm gonna just mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Because people want us to tell them things and people want this, that, and the other. We've all been in this position and some of us have been isolated where we couldn't get information from nobody but God within us. And then we're, we're looking around at people all over the world and we're saying, gosh, this is so hard. But you know what? As hard as it is, is as blessed you will be. The thing is, I, I mean, that's been a hard one for me to say because I've been through some battles. But I still stand to say that I believe. I believe that there would be a time of freedom when, you know, my family and, and all my, my sons even told me a year ago, Mom, you're crazy. It's never going to happen. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So Pluto, Pluto's position is to destroy and regenerate. Of course, Hades. And I'm going to tell you what. The easiest way, if you're open-minded to look at this, you know, 
is to look at the Clash of the Titans. And I've been talking about that movie for about three months because it was, I'm sure what, you know, Spirit was taking me into because there is wars and famine. No one could really see the wars and famine the way that mm, others might be able to see it. And that's from a prophetic, say, seer point of view. For me, I saw it probably over um, 10 to 15 years ago and others did, but I'm saying that my mind took me back to Clash of the Titans. And then my mind also took me to um, times of Roman wars in the spirit. I went in there and I could see why I was being positioned to know about the illusion. Because the illusion has to do with darkness. You really can't see. The lens is not clear within the spirit. It's not anything to be afraid of, but that, that means that you are working off of the navigation of your spirit man. Because if, if there's an illusion now, you know that there's an illusion, you wanna ask for the breaking of the illusion, which has to do with a lot of you know financial issues that people have had. I can't see any way out of it, the patterns, the cycles of families. It's an illusion. What is the illusion uh, according to me? What is the false thinking that I have been, you know, wrapped up in? And one of the things about myself, and I give that to you, is in the illusion because, yes, it's going to be hard for you to get an understanding of freedom if you're always bound. You're going to always talk about bondage unconsciously. But if you get in that 12th house and you begin to work with it and admit to yourself whatever the problems you see in the 12th house, which has to do with bondage, addictions, codependency, even the shadow work that we did a couple of months ago, anything that binds you and tie you up, that's when the illusion will begin to dissipate and you'll begin to see a sense of freedom. But th what happens is, is that the illusion has to do with a way of thinking. We're not in the Piscean age. I'm saying this anymore. The energy of freedom is upon people. They're wrestling with what they see outside of them and what they feel within. No, no one is comfortable within right now. They're not. But it's because. They don't see outside of them what they want, which means you got to see within you what you want. And that's, that's the truth. But this is the time because you and I did not know that we were actually, oh, we said we were living in an illusion or that we had been mm, brainwashed. That was just said. When did you start working with it? And when the pandemic came in, it brought in an era of understanding because there's people that love to go out and do stuff. And then you can find when they love to go out and do stuff and they can't. See, you can find then the ones that have a hard time with confinement because see, you've got to have amusement. You can't amuse yourself. The mind is always doing something and you've got to be in a place where something is amusing you and you can't amuse yourself. Like how many of y'all can sit down in a room for two days and do nothing? Okay. <laughs> something to Maybe think. read. I can uh, read. I can read, but absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's a little hard. <laughs> okay. So there's people that had a hard time and mental illness is showing up because they could not stay in the house or wear the mask. And that says a lot because externally, if you're an external person, and that's great that you know that you function by external means, but if you can't adapt to internal, that's where your prison is. Do I need to say it again? Your prison is internal if you cannot adapt to 
sitting down for a spell. If you have to and you are stimulated by external things, you can know that you do not want to deal with your internal issues. And anybody that's here can correct me. It's the same for someone that is internal like myself. I loved, I loved it. So I adapted it and, and I made my job. I told them, no, I ain't going back in the building. This is what I'm doing. Because I love it and I, re I receive more information. There's non-conflict and it's not that I'm isolated away. There's times when if you're going to receive information that's going to be productive for others to live in a, a free society, you're going to have to be alone. And you're going to have to begin to think outside of what you've been thinking or your own self thoughts. So Pluto, Pluto energy is about regeneration. So all of this stuff has been being broke down at least from, I, I, I would go back into um, 1950s, but it started showing itself in 2008 when Obama was in office. And they put it back together and gave that bailout money to um, the um, mortgage companies instead of the people. So see, here's karma for them coming up. Because they didn't do the people right. So there's a God of this world and a God of the heavens, but this is incorporated within ourselves. It's not outside of us, it's internal. For them, it is external. For them, it is about money. It's all about uh, the fame, the show up, uh, how much they can acquire. So some of the faulty system issues and the illusions have to do with us being brought into their paradigm of thinking. We were never equipped to receive what they had because they had already went to a table and created a plan. Back in the 1800s and 1700s, they created a plan. And this is the thing with our people. They're gonna show up and they're gonna vote, um, let's see, in November. And then they're going to say, well, what happened again? As if they had good people that they was going to elect. They never thought about themselves being elected. Now, I don't mean in the midst of the, um, as, as far as a running candidate, but elect yourself to be a part of humanity that's going to make a change within your own community sector. Regeneration. The breakdown of the system that these planets has um, been uh, given and creating is showing the issues with the system. It's not done. The thing is, is that do you pay attention to the energy? What, what's happening even in you? Because some of your frustrations or um, your anger is not about your personal life. It's about other things. It is even about your own desires to do more and be better. But who's keeping you from that? especially when you have support. See, it's a choice. And some of the choices that we feel we have are predicated on what we learn from our mothers and fathers. But if you were sent to be a way shower for freedom, your mind and consciousness is gonna have to change. I'm not saying that I'm pushing it on you. I'm just telling you. If you were a call for that, cause I was like, um, Man, you know they don't want me to. They don't want me to teach in no church. Then I was like, I don't, my message is not for that. Mine is more about advocation. I could see myself on a podium saying, "Free the people. I'm for the people." You know, down with Trump. You know, I, I could see myself being that. But I also, you know, there's other aspects of me that can lead people to the water. Now. If you lead them to the water, it's not about f fame for me. I don't care about being seen. I, I'm one of them people that had to be pushed up to be seen. I just care that people become free. That's it. Because I believe that it's possible. I don't believe that we were put in this, this world to have to live in hell forever. 
Some people are going to experience it because that's just the way it is. But as for me in my house, I choose to serve the Lord. And that Lord or Lord is, is me and the God within me. Lord and Lord this. Did you know it was a Lord is? These are all phrases, information that pull you into who you are. You are a queen. It's not just that Isis was a queen and she had a king. We hadn't been taught what we're learning right now because the destruction of the world is putting us in a fear-based situation or either a place of claiming rightly what's ours. It's not that the scriptures or whatever we were taught didn't work for us, it was a time and a season. Because there's a rising of people and the rising of people have a consciousness that is beyond this time. Now, when Saturn is traveling with these planets, there is a structure. The old structure is being broken that has to do with the, the, the illusion and Piscean age. Please understand what I'm saying. Because the Piscean age was about dictation also. That's why no one else uh, can speak but certain people or that they, they can pay their way in. Yeah, that shit is out the door. Anybody that wants to speak, and that's why, you know, you support people that got power to free people mentally. Why do you do that? Because you have a word in your mouth. You are convicted within yourself to give them that information. That means that they're going to listen and baby, they're going to go home and study and become free. Listen, people didn't study about 10 years ago. They're going to be studying now because with all of the losses, it leads you just to that. And where are the losses leading you to when you study the buildup? See, there's a breakdown for everyone, but the buildup is in the groups. What do you have to bring to the table? What can you help somebody else do? The buildup after the breakdown. So now, here you go into the next month. Um, in the next, let's say the next 10 days, you know, Saturn is going direct. We started feeling a lot better when Jupiter went direct, and there's still some highs and lows, melancholy, but you feel better because it was getting to a place where people were utterly feeling depression. And as you get over and these planets begin to go direct, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to see things that happened two years ago bring in um, retribution, um, karma for good and bad sealing the deal on a cycle that is closed out. A lot of people um, are wondering if, when the um, um, Aquarian age is going to come in, but the reason why I said, okay, I'm going to talk about this, is because the Aquarian age is actually prompting people in their chart right now. The Aquarian age is also the tower in the tarot, because it's a sudden break down or breakthrough. A sudden breakdown or breakthrough. Anything that's happened suddenly this year that you experience like, you know, people having to move, um, that's a suddenly. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that Something is changing for the better. How you see it and experience it in your mind is how it's going to play outside. And you know, that has to do with whatever the issues are around it. The issues around it, I think that if we mentally uh, get down and say, Ugh, well, I had to go because of whatever, so it is good. Then that makes it better. I had to go through this so that I could write a book, so it is good. You got to trick your mind because your mind will always tell you, well, I want it the way that it was. Why? That's familiar. Codependency. And then I ask myself, did that shit really work for you? Why are you crying? That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, um, really, did it work for you? 
It didn't. And so if it didn't work, what you crying for, dummy? Oh, because I was attached and now I realized I was, I was codependent or I had some real issues. I was imprisonment. You know what I'm saying? And I, I didn't know. Then you cry about your lost time. But you're gaining time on a level that's beyond you because in this energy with Uranus, it, it opens people up to some creative thinking like, you know, you might have seen yourself in another place and then you back here. That's quantum leaping, you know? And then here we are and, you know, people would say, well, gosh, you know, Miss Kim, that, that's some crazy stuff, but I'm like there. Why? Because I'd rather be able to do something phenomenal that other people cannot do and, and see what's getting ready to come uh, where others can't so that I could warn them. That's just one thing. Uh, if I could help you change your vibration with a frequency and, and music, I would love that. If, if, you know, talking about an energy that is a dominant energy that will help us to become free, I want to be a part of it. Why? Because it's very painful to be in a situation where you see people on drugs addicted. That is prison. Not to mention death is coming. People that are sexually addicted, people that it, they can't keep a home, people that have been in that kind of cycle, financially, you know, struggling. Why? But just as we had um, men that were, um, they showed that it was men that, you know, studied, um, the stars and the heavens, you know, such as Aristotle and Newton. And I'm bringing that up for a reason. Women are smart. Women got lots of wit. Some time of, uh, you know, some of us was brainwashed that we should sit in the fact that we should be mothers and having children. And I don't knock that. But what about you? And what you're bringing to the table, society, what greatness that you're bringing. Are you allowing the light to bring that forth or are you staying in a place where you thought you should be because of family? Because I know I got a word that my family was going to be healed. It ain't happened yet. I still believe it, but I ain't stopping right here to wait on folks that don't want to cooperate. That's on them. You understand what I'm saying? I'm moving on. Why? Because that's how I feel about life and people. So if I served in certain areas and it's time for me, you will feel the spirit usher you on. What does that say? The spirit has to be more predominant in our life. And I'm not saying that I have all of the knowledge and keys, but I'm gonna tell you something. I experienced enough to say that when I've been, I've been hurt, it's time for me to bail out. Goodbye, because I love peace. The more I pray and the more that I sit in um, meditation, the more I love not to hear voices talking all the time. Why? Because I want to hear or feel what the Spirit is saying, because that's what's gotten me through. Now, that's just the way that I live. And I can because I'm 55 and I'll be 56 now. And if somebody don't like it, so what? That's what I got to say. I deserve to be able to say what I want and what I'm going to have peace. And that is a place where, you know, Venus is coming in and you say liberty. Hold on. Venus is coming in and, you know, you say liberty and she's all about balance. And a lot of us don't realize that we have not lived balanced lives because over here we're crying about what and how we should want it. And truly spirit will work with you on how it's supposed to be. And if it's not working out the right way, because, you know, we all have free will, there will be alterations and adjustments made so that you definitely, if your heart is in it, God will make a way, goddess, will make a way, you know, I put them together because there's a balance that um, Venus is bringing in 
and this time, Libra. And all of that is wrapping around this freedom. So you got some people that's realizing that they can be free to do what? <clears throat> they can be free to do what they want within the confines of discipline and structure because Saturn is never leaving. Saturn is always going to be there to give you your good karma and your negative karma. Jupiter is also going to be there. And so those energies, we can live in those energies in a raw um, archetype aspect or over in an adaptable way, meaning that you do not allow them to act as Hades did in the movie of the Clash of the Titans. You can see where Hades um, regeneration breakdown, you don't want Hades to just continuously go through life destroying stuff. He got to get disciplined. And that's where Saturn is. This movie will give you an understanding even, okay, any, any part of you that is not disciplined, this movie, gonna, it will give you that if you really open to it, because when I tell you about illusion, illusion is a uh, part of what people believe they can do whatever they want to do. The devil is a liar and that's who you are. You cannot, because the universe rules on good and bad. There is a fight in the heavens and in the earth concerning you know, uh, some of the issues that we, we go through, but Sometimes we, we got to look at it, I feel, and say, um, how did I make it, did I make it worse, you know, did I, did, did I cause this, um, and I'm not going to say that I didn't, I will say that I could see where rescue has come for me when I didn't want to do stuff a certain way, and that doesn't mean that I didn't reap a harvest of pain, but I learned from the pain rather than getting bitter. It's important. So if Hades can be a destructive force, but then know its limits, which is Pluto, then that means that we as individuals that have scorpionic energy in our charts have to get that together as well. Saturn is the same. Saturn, you will always have to go back to the beginning because it's a classroom. If you don't do it right, you're going to stay in the first grade, even if you're 35 years old. Okay, that's how it is. So um, Jupiter is, is a lot like Saturn, but it expands. And so in the negative of Jupiter, you got some people right now, Jupiter came out and they started feeling better, but then they started going back and all they depressed. You got to work with the energy and make it work for you. Yeah, you, you make it work for you. That means that if you know somebody that's not laughing, send them a video so that they will laugh because laughter, it, it, it causes the energy to go up. Um, a lot of people are crying right now because there's a detox. The release, because you can't go into a new era, you know, like when you look at your chart tonight, look and see where um, Aquarius is in your energy. And you cannot go into that, that era thinking and acting the same. Like mine is in the 11th house and in the 7th house. And, uh, so that means that I've been crying a lot. And because I'm crying a lot, that means that I'm moving dead energy out, stagnant energy out so that the new energy can come in. And I'm like, oh man, every time I start crying and having a fit, I'm having a breakthrough, Uranus. You see? What are you getting out of all of this? Because some people stand in the energy say, oh, you know, I'm just having family problems. I'm having friend problems, man problems, you know, all of these kind of problems. And they don't even understand that it's not even that. It, people are just staying in the energy of what's going on from 10 years ago. 
and they don't even understand that their body is even adapting to release old dead energy like when you go just imagine if you ain't been to the bathroom in 10 years yes and if you ain't been to the bathroom in 10 years the pain in your body releasing old energy and old thought patterns is going to it's going to hurt so you're not just crying about what you've experienced with people or seeming losses. You are crying sometimes because you have not released the energy through the body. And, and this energy is like an energy of the universe. It's saying, I need to get through. You know, I'm pushing through and that's the truth. Is there any questions? None for me. So the energy has to come through you in order for it to use you. But even when it's coming through, your consciousness is being adapted to discipline where it cannot use you like Mars. Mars is um, retrograde, and so people are feeling um, inferior, I mean, infuriated, frustrated. And that's going on, and it's going to become more predominant by next month. Um, there's going to be some blackouts and, um, I've seen where people are actually, um, you know, saying to get new computers. If you can, I don't think that it should be anything that you try to do if you don't, but be aware that because of the retrograde in Mercury, even next month and Mars, that the possibilities of things blowing up, meaning, um, your computers is great because mercury is going into retrograde mars is in retrograde um and mercury is going to be in retrograde in scorpio which means that people are going to be re reflecting on deep things whenever you go deep you want to look at what you need to release reflect because scorpio is deep it is the the hell planet uh that's saying you're here not just to visit pain, but to visit how you can release this old unproductive energy. But then while you got Mars in retrograde, there you are right there looking at what, okay, what you frustrated about? Well, because I'm in a bad relationship and it ain't working for me. What? Pray and make, make some decisions. Now that's just an example. <laughs> and anything else you can think of that you know you're just holding on to because it's familiar um let's see um i think that that's it with the retrograde so um to look at the energies you want to you want to look at how you are releasing for this new uh, energy um, to work in your life. And um, I feel like this new energy is going to be um, really a blessing to people like us because many of us on here have worked for the good of humankind. And you can see yourself um, being called into maturity. You got people that work in classrooms, you work in businesses where you work with people, but now you may begin to see or you felt that a change has to happen according to the work um, foundation that you're in. The kids, um, you guys know that those children are going to be um, homeschooled. So all of y'all mothers, you know, that love to be homeschoolers, uh, or work with kids, you need to come together and put something together. That's how you make money. Look at how you can come together and begin to teach online. And, you know, I'm going to say this here. This is all Uranus because I have people calling me to do um, networking events online. And I was like, oh, wow, that's Uranus. You know, just identify and say thank you. Because as you do, the energy will keep coming. It's going to show you how to 
make money, for people that are creative, the sun energy, it's going to show them how to be more innovative and creative. Not the way that they want to be, but the way that's going to attract people into a new era like the entertainment business, business the last shall be first and the first shall be last. That means that, look, wipe out. Yes. It's not that I'm saying they're going to all die. I'm saying that the way that they're doing things, you can see people are doing entertainment online now, and it's going to become more because now, you know, we got relaxed with Uranus and Saturn um, back in uh, the earlier part of the year when it first came up, the pandemic, everybody then got relaxed. But the, the, how many of y'all done heard now that it's airborne? Like they didn't already know that. Yeah. Okay. Now, crazy. Why don't we think ahead? Because we don't be using this energy I'm talking about. Oh, I'm just going to think right now where I am and this is how it is. Good. And that's why I've gotten in a lot of trouble because I'm a future thinker. That's what Uranus does. Did I know all of that before? I just said, no, I don't understand why people don't, they don't get what I'm saying. Nobody really understands me. It wasn't time. It wasn't time. So uh, a lot of you probably are going to be able to work better with this energy. But the main thing that you want to, you want to really, really get down with Pisces and, and get beyond the illusions. Because if you don't, then you're going to bring in elusive information concerning the new technology and the times energy electricity why do you think they went to solar panels the people are already and i say the people people that has been running the world they're already ahead so there's a conflict and the thing here is is that they're actually warring with the universe people such as the queen the people that's been running the world she don't even live in her house no more I, I mean, I know that some of y'all on here think about that, but how many people do y'all talk with daily that think about stuff like that? Yeah, she she left back in February, uh, January, February. All right. And what does that have to do with what we're talking about? Because their reign of the house was from the Piscean age. The Piscean age has um, constrictions, the Christ age. The Dark Age. All of those people were illus illusions of leadership. Because what did they do for anybody? Just listen to what I'm saying. Even I'm going back and I'm saying to you, I'm saying, okay, people had lost their hope. I know in the last three to four years concerning Christ, but Christ was not the problem. Christ still lives, it's inside of us. It's our hope of glory. It was never a mass um, type of preaching thing. That was for an era. And the era is showing us right now where we're going in and I said 10 days. It don't mean that it's gonna be easy, but if your focus gets on the fact that the apostolic movement was about the spiritual um, foundation, you're gonna get it. You'll start speaking in tongues a little bit more and using that. Because this is where the crossover is. This is where the Jordan is. Um, you don't, you know, you allow yourself, revive me in the midst of the works. We've been saying stuff, but we did not really understand how it was coming or how it would be happening. But all of that, like the woman that pressed her way through the crowd to touch Jesus, the hem of his garment, people going to be touching his garment, but it's the garment within. The heart has to be touched before, the heart. And I said, you got to go beyond the sun, the heart. The, the phenomenal thing about the astros is that they are named. At least but all of them, you know, there's significant ones that make a star. Leo is one. Venus is one. Scorpio is one. Gemini. 
Aries, they all make a start. But the thing about it is people had not realized or got to the point of understanding that when you work on you as a star and you connect with the astros, you become a star. You cannot be a star until you are regulated with the astros and the earth. And this is not outside of your learning because the pattern of what you had been illuminating concerning the spiritual realm and the astro is the spiritual realm is not been what's brought you to a place of breakthrough. The breakthrough is when you actually follow the di the the, the um what I want to say the it's like drawing out that part of you in the sky. You are part of that. That's why Leo is the sun. But from Leo, Venus has her part and she's drawing out the flower. I've talked to people about it. I haven't showed them specifically, but as you understand it, do you understand that it's a process and a cycle of time that you have to go through like we're going through into the Aquarian age? We're going into a time that's in your chart. I'm showing you something to work on. Because if you work on that area and you let go, really, really let go of the illusions, illusions, what are they in your life, in my life? Neo, I mean, the matrix is one. I mean, Neo was on there and they was communicating with him through the, the maybe I'm an illusion. You know what I'm saying? And um, they were communicating with him through the computer and he went on with his curiosity and, and he fell into their hands. He, he, you know, he came out of the matrix and he became a Superman. Such a wonderful story. And then, you know, people will say, well, that's a movie. And I'm like, yeah, well, I think that's a movie that I fit in because sci-fi um, is the way. So, see, this energy that I'm telling you about is about science, not just fiction, but it's about science and spirituality. Remember they said that there's no such thing as science, not Scientology, but science and uh, Christianity. How could it not be when your body is um, science, anatomy? These people have lied so much, please help me. Now that ain't something I just came to know, but I'm just putting it out there because if you didn't have anatomy, then you wouldn't be able to get uh, your body together. Please, I mean, I need somebody to make some faces like me because that's some BS that we didn't fail for. That's an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other illusion is the way that our families would feed us with pork and fat back. We was eating um, the poor man's um, food. How can you get your health into divine order? not just by praying illusion okay i'm just gonna pray that i lose weight and that's cool but you you got to do something with your anatomy too right it makes sense mm, absolutely but there's an illusion there okay so let me tell you the other one is um and i was in that so we had the times when you could name it and claim it but did y'all realize that that went away it wasn't working no more the reason why it wasn't working is because the spirit said, okay, it's time for you to learn something else. And people were still saying, name it and claim it. I name it and claim it. Ain't nothing happening, right? That's because you got to evolve with your name and claim. You got to start seeing it and being it, right? And then it's not just what I say, but it's also study and show yourself approved. How can you bring a new not even new, something that has been used, but people put it to sleep so that only they could profit, like the Bothelim. All of this stuff that they taught people about witchcraft and everything. Now, I'm not, I'm not moving away from the energies here with um, Saturn and Uranus, because Saturn is one that they use a lot with the entertainment system. 
the political leaders, Botham, the Masons, all of this here is incorporated in what I'm talking about. And I have said, um, yeah, this is going to be an expensive class that I charge for. When I start doing a master's class on this, yeah. When you go through and you have been designated as an initiate, you're not just going through because. You're going through because the blood of Jesus, it heals. It saves and it raises, but it's going to be a day and a time when you're going to realize that that is the anointing in your life. And it becomes you as that Christ. Because your testimony of what you went through and there was a time and a season designated for you to wake up from familiar situations and familiar things and says, go that way. And if you follow it, then it's going to unlock the next part of your life and you will have that testimony. Ain't nothing changed about the Bible. The thing about the Bible is the codes that people do not see. Unlocking them, the time and the season, your freedom. Listen, when you look at your chart today or tonight or tomorrow, find out historically where you were born at. So I, the cues that I got had to do with, I would see Malcolm X and I would feel him, like his radicalness. And I never did like uh, Martin Luther King, I'm just gonna say, but that was for me. And so something said to me, Look up the era, that, the time that you were born. Why did your soul come here? And so the time that I was born, it, 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 it equated to me feeling like I would be someone that would teach people this. And um, I was born in this time that we're in where protesters are maximally, they are going to take it to their asses. Freedom is going to come. It's going to be massive. But I was born 55 years ago when the stars aligned during this time in December coming up. That's why I couldn't teach or preach in a church because the message is for freedom. And what they were teaching in churches is not freeing people. People are still in the Piscean age of illusion. So even when you look at some of your leaders that are in these books and, you know, they define a color, it's not about color, but I did see as a child when they were saying that his feet was brass, that it was like the same color as man. So that ain't white with blue eyes. Another damn illusion. And I don't care if somebody hurt because sometimes when you hurt, that's when you wake up. That's why everybody crying right now, because of the great awakening. You cannot awaken without being, um, uh, being hurt some way or another. You're going to feel pain. Yeah, okay? All right. So any questions, and we'll get finished for tonight. I hope you guys um, enjoy. But I do hope you go and look at the time you were born, because I was born in 1964, and Gemini North Node was positioned where it is right now. And they did not complete the freedom in the 60s, but it's going to be complete in this season because Aquarius is right here. So how do we calculate it? We, we look at the, 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 our, our birth date and just see where, the, where everything was at that time? Yep, you can go in and um, look at, <coughs> like um, if you were born in 1970, um, mm -hmm. you can go in and look at, you know, what historical, um, times happened, what, what history, oh, I see. What history yeah. and, um, because I kept, even, you know, even when I was younger, I would be like, why, why don't they, um, talk about him? Cause you know, it's not a lot of pictures with him, with all of them. Um, it would just be JFK and all of them. And I remember the velvet wall pictures and Jesus with that big crown on and the blue eyes and, it just didn't, I mean, you got to think about what didn't feel right when you was coming up. And so if you were born in the 70s, look at the historical aspects that were going on. If you, you were born around Watergate, nine times, <laughs> nine times out of 10, your soul came here to shine the light on them line as political leaders. Think about it. So you got 
times, you know, uh, that are pivotal that you can think, but this is the part that people don't, they just in their house and they just doing what they do, everything. They not thinking, what did my soul come here to do? And your soul gonna hurt when it's breaking off stuff that you cannot do anymore. You can't be a part of stuff. Mm -hmm. You gonna crack. Yeah. That's part of the um, detachment from that. It's not to say that you won't, you, won't, you won't go back and maybe pick up something with those people, but what is your mission? And your mission, like for me, my purpose is to educate people on um, spiritual things, but spiritual things come from history. You got to, mm -hmm. you got to break down the dynamics of the illusions of history. It ain't his. Like them kids started going and breaking down the monuments and stuff. Yes, throw them in the river. That's a lie from the pit of hell right there. That's an illusion. They got all of those mm -hmm. uh, monuments everywhere and they done took down Egyptian monuments, you know, to make it look like they were the ones that conquered the land. When you got pe people from Egypt, I said the Bible is written to show that Egyptians were slaves. That's an illusion. They were captivated and then a word was put on them that they were low level people. That is a lie. Because history tells you what they did, which also it thrives into our genetics. Creators, inventors. This is the time when such people are rising again. Now that's not just over here in the Western world. Yes, it's a lot of fighting going on everywhere. The oppression has been everywhere, but if Mandela hadn't came and fought, kept fighting, then what would happen? And I'm not looking at just the skin color. I'm not looking at that because there's fair complexion <laughs> of Egyptians and dark Egyptians, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yo, Sarah was just on here. I think she had to leave off, but the thing is, is that in every culture, there's light and, and um, darker skin. It's not about the color, it's about the mind. And I, um, I think that, you know, Ashley said, the color is about green right now, and that's true, green. But we see beyond that illusion because before money was created, there was no, there was trade and embargo the illusions because you can still trade you know uh after so many people have come into the classes over the last couple of weeks i said well you know what i sent out the invitation let me just go ahead and do this for free because receive give and receive yes but i'm also going to teach about how to get money you know that is you know for anybody that wants to get it because that's me that's yeah and that's life me too <laughs> and everything yeah everything is not free here me three yeah you can't live here without making money so okay questions and and then i'm I'm going to close and i'll send this on um, video over to you guys oh, i gotta go though <laughs> nothing for me <laughs> oh that's so funny okay. <laughs> where are you going <laughs> You going camping? No, I said I have 10 of them. They're for oh. the airborne for it. <laughs> but um, I don't have any questions. I just, I didn't want to be rude and jump off because I have to get onto another. Take this thing off, goodness. Okay. I have, to get on, I have to get onto another Zoom, but I just wanted to say hi to everybody and it was a great class and thank you, Ms. Kim, as always. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Send us the link on that one because we're going to all need those. Yeah, we need that. <laughs> okay. Yep. I will. Um, I'll see right. you guys soon. Okay. Thank Take you. Care. Okay. Take care. Anybody else? Yeah, good. I don't have any questions. I'm going to have to um, sit and review because this was a lot of information. Yeah. And then um, mm -hmm. you want to you wanna definitely for um, the sun and the moon, People, y'all want to really get into the fact that you got to immerse yourself in the, the fact that you're going through each planet every month and what you are receiving from those planets. Because if you don't, 
you're going to be lost. And then people that have like Leo, 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 or um, cancer, 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 you want to get yourself in a place where you really get foundational foundational meaning your roots down you can't just think about it because your water energy sun energy means that you're gonna fire you're gonna be fire everywhere and you can't be fire everywhere you cannot be water everywhere like people are having floods in their house i you know someone that two people that i know but it's a reason why and here we are talking about the water bearer mm -hmm. So the, the water bearer begins to break through to get your attention. That's that energy. And I said, it's the energy of the tower in the tarot because it strikes at any moment. And it's not a negative, it's striking to make a change. So those people that had issues in the house with water, um, it's something that they want to look at pay attention to um also those water that you know if you had plumbing issues it's costing them money where is their alignment on the chart with uranus like for me i gotta be careful because it's in the material house for me mm -hmm. yeah it's also in um uranus is also in my seventh house that's partnerships and um, relationships. Yeah. Oh. And I think um, my um, Uranus in my natal is in my, my third, but it's actually in conjunct right now with the transit, which is in the eighth. The, the eighth? Is it the eighth or the ninth? So I thought that was, it's in the eighth. So I thought that was very interesting. Right. And what I was saying to you um, about counting is, so <clears throat> when you're born, and I'll um, show everyone that next week, when you're born, that's actually your first house. So you're going to go from, say, like um, Cancer, that's your first house, that's where you're born, you're going to go from Leo and count on to, that's, oh. that's how you do it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah so, oh, that's, so I guess it's in my fourth house. Which one? Uranus, if I'm counting that. So we're not looking at the natal chart anymore? Like the natal chart is not applicable in this instance? It is, but your progression is going to cause you to look at it from the place that you were born. I see the progression. Gotcha. Oh, wow. I wow. just look at it because um, it's not telling me enough if I just look at my natal chart. That's where I was born, but where am I going? And then um, the information. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like for me, um, Mercury retrograde in Scorpio uh, <laughs> in Libra, I usually don't have any problems or it's going to be in Scorpio during Libra season. I don't usually have a lot of problems. Neither do mm -hmm. I have um, Venus in wow. that and um, so I looked at it and I said, oh, okay, that means that there's going to be some people that are going to be coming back in, but they got to be different. This could be my test with um, Venus and, you know, being in Libra, it could be my test of if I'm really up to par with boundaries. Uh-huh. Mm. I've had um, a test because, um, you know, somebody um, called me that was married and asked me to go out with them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, I don't, I ain't doing that, you know, and I'm just being <laughs> serious because that's my, it's not to hurt you. Um, maybe if you knew me when I was younger, I might've done that, but I, I, I ain't doing that because I'm not doing no karma, not negative. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, I'm not uh, down for the karma either. Right. <laughs> yes. And, um, so yeah, look at your chart and find out where that energy is. Cause see, for me, Uranian energy is in my twelfth house. I mean, um, in my um eleventh house and in my um seventh house. And um seventh house is about partnerships. So um I would have to work on balance because 
Uranian energy makes you explode when you get angry. There's no median. Plus Pluto is there and Mars. So that was where I realized that I had to learn how to uh, mediate my um, temperament and uh, work on it to get disciplined because if I didn't, then all of this energy of explosiveness uh, causing change erratically, which is um, Uranus would put me in displacement. Um, and that's a lesson. That's why it, it's there. Um, also that I make my money through partnerships. So I had to learn how to um, adapt my personality and my energy discipline without getting mad, but also speaking up for myself. And um, I can say that some people are not happy with this. But that's okay, because it's about me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's not a selfish thing, but at some point in your life, you got to take um, account of how you feel. And if you feel like you've been shortchanged and you're being honest, it's your fault that you sh you're shortchanged. If you don't put yourself in a perspective where you have boundaries and you say, no, I cannot do this and I'm not doing it to make people feel good or that, you know, you feel like you need to shine and so you do everything people ask you to do or that you're a people pleaser, which has a lot to do with the shadow, then you're not learning things. People pleasing. And I mean, it's one thing to say this, but it's another to walk it because before you get to the place where it really matters, you're going to feel pain because when you change people, they don't want to be bothered with you or they're going to, you know, they're going to throw out different kind of, um, they're going to have their own fits because they was used to you being what they wanted you to be. Ain't that the truth? <clears throat> but, you know, this is where you get to um, show your strength and it's not a strength of you know, monopolization or dominance is a strength to say that I'm living for me. You know, this is a part of me that I, I didn't let live. I was doing everything in my life for people. And, you know, this is where Uranus is also coming in and saying, are you really free? Um, did you really know what salvation was about when you went to church? Did you really learn? <laughs> and then you start saying, well, nope, I still got, I got bills. Ain't nobody told me how to get rid of bills or, um, dominating people that demand something from you and you know it's just a balance and an awareness that comes in from all of the work that you do when you really work you know whatever you want you got to work for it and that means that you and the heavenlies are going to work together you know it's not about oh you know we come into this here um understanding of the planets the planets are in the bible but we come into the understanding so that we can acclimate the two, you know? Because you cannot bind something in heaven and bind it in earth if you don't even know what the hell is going on in heaven. Where is heaven? <laughs> and they say that all the time. <laughs> right. And I, I want to I wanna put it out there um, where we can get consciously aware of it because we've been praying. And I'm not saying that I wasn't praying, but I was thinking... Why won't they teach the people about heaven? Well, heaven is within you, but if you don't know that the constellations are named by Greek gods, and why is that? If you're not asking why, and then if you don't go even further, you know, like, because uh, Nyla and I were talking about Mary uh, yesterday, and um, I told her there's something as she um, experienced, I just want to say this because someone else that I talked to over the weekend experienced Mary. But Mary um, changes throughout cultures. Her, she's a different deity in different cultures. So even where, you know, you will ask me about them, <clears throat> um, the Egyptians or the Eastern uh, world, one of the things that we have to look at from our Christ um, ideation is uh, the fact that the three wise men followed um, the star to Christ. Did, did they follow him to the physical place in the earth or was it in the heavens? 
And you see, what people don't understand this is that prophets aren't just people that speak out of anointed or utterance. Prophets followed the stars. They did not follow people. That's why they don't fit in churches. They follow the stars like Harriet Tubman. She followed, she was taught about the stars and she followed the stars in the Underground Railroad. You know, think about all of this. And so if she hadn't had the stars, how in the heck would she have gotten all them people to freedom? Not to mention the, the gut feeling that she had to just get free. That's, that's a Uranian energy right there. Mm -hmm. And she was working in a time of illusion, darkness, where many of the slaves were saying, oh no, I can't get free, master gonna kill us. Well, yeah. I, you know, we coming into a day and time, it's just like, man, I, I love you, but I can't live in your illusion. I can't do it. I love you, but I cannot live in your illusion. I, I got mm -hmm. to be free. It's got to be something more. Because like here, if, when I look at it, whatever the um, conversation might be for you, 55 years, I've been going around mountains. Really? I'd rather cry and get up and be happy in the morning you know, do something else and go and cry because it's just old energy that's coming out my body anyway. And no, it don't right. feel that simple, but I'm telling you what it is. You know, if you've been with something or I'm um, going through something for years upon years, it's not the situation. It is the energy that you have contracted from the situation that you're dealing with. It ain't the people. It's the normalcy and the energy is backed up in you. That is so true. Yeah. Wow. How in the world could you be angry with people for 10 years? Right. And holding on to it. Yeah. Not it. It's the energy of you doing the same thing. You backed up. And so now you're a robot. Now you traditional. Now you do just like you're going and celebrating Thanksgiving and that ain't even your holiday. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. Not <laughs> You're telling the truth. <laughs> Yeah, you was given that holiday. So where's your holiday at, really? Great. And that's a question that you can take for yourself. Many, many questions, you know, like um, I said earlier, Socrates did not tell people. He, he provoked them to think. Think about the Socratic questioning. Look up some, and then you'll see what I'm saying. And like, you know, your Sarah put on here, and we were talking about... Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, she was saying that she felt like it was a time where, you know, people were coming into, um, I feel we're moving into more feminine energy. And that's when I kept bringing up Newton and um, Aristotle, because it bothers me when I go and I look and I see that it was only men that was writing about the changes of time and, you know, anatomy, psychology, astrology, and cosmology. That bothers me because it's not true. Not to mention that it was not only white people, that black people was doing this over in Egypt before, um, yeah, that's it. Scriptures, Hebrew 10 and Luke 21, yep. That's where you're going to get the fruit of what we talked about tonight. Um, going through that right now. Okay. And so, yeah, your emotions... And um, if you cannot adapt from external to internal, then your prison is within. And that's true, because if you're always um, fighting to go outside and do something, and you can't sit down to get um, a moment of silence and meditation and peace, then it's a prison. And that has to do with Pisces, because you know your external has had something like, let's just say, for instance, um, you know, signs that are used to just being outgoing. You got to get balance. You can't be outgoing all the time. Because how in the world can a president be everywhere speaking to people and do any good for us? Just let, let's just ask that. Because he's a Gemini. <laughs> and it don't matter if you're this. I'm sorry, go ahead.
It don't matter if you're a good speaker. What matters is if you got the meat of truth and spirit with you. And there's no way that all of these people, even Barack, can't stand it. God bless. Liars. They didn't do nothing for the people. And Honora is on here. She know that um, I didn't never tell nobody about my thoughts on politicians until she asked me, right, Honora? And that's yes, just ma'am, I did. And you let me have it too. <laughs> But I, I, I wouldn't be biased to tell you that what you shouldn't do. I just know the way that would um, really, it would make everybody in America think if they thought, if no one showed up to the polls and people would be like, oh, well, that's not happening. And that's because you don't, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen to expose liars. Yeah. They done told you not to go out and be six feet together, but they making sure they get away for you to, to, to vote for what? Their system. You ain't got no system. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, why they mm -hmm. doing what they doing? Absentee ballots and all. Yeah. Okay. So why they doing? probably won't get counted. Yeah. Oh, okay. So see, now y'all on it. Everything that they do, what you do now, is be calculated in what you're doing to better your family and humanity. And you know, I know that can be hard when you're looking at how should I think about this? Well, if you think about how you should think about being a, cha a change agent in, in the world, spirit gonna begin to connect with you. It's gonna begin to connect with you to show you how. And it don't have to be something prominent, but what you want to prepare for is food rationing. Because um, Anila, I mean, Naila just said, you said um, that you had dreamt about that. And that's something that we started working on um, when we were feeding the homeless. But the changes in our lives are going to be dramatic. dramatic. It's not to fear, but it's like, yeah, listen in so that you can be a part of the motion. Not for the illusion, but for the um, breakthrough. So the breakdown is going to be in some people's lives and houses, and the breakthrough is going to be in some people's lives and houses. Kim, Kim have you, um, you know, we've been hearing that for a while. Have you gotten any... Um idea of the time frame i haven't gotten i just keep hearing like it's coming get ready but i'm not hearing like when you know I at least feel, not yet yeah i feel like it's um got to be within the next month or two because even with the energy election I, yeah yeah it's not like um mm -hmm. mercury retrograde is going to be um easy for a lot of people, nor is Mars. But the other thing is, is that these three planets is going direct. Jupiter is already direct and Pluto is going to direct the Saturn. This means that people are going to be more um, frustrated because of karma. Positive karma is going to be good feelings. Negative karma is going to be impacting people because we're going into a new era. Think about what I'm saying. So they were frustrated about staying at home through the pandemic. And that was Saturn and um, Aquarius together. Pisces came in in February and ushered in the disease. Now, since Pisces has been in retrograde and no one really sees that, they have allowed, um, they, they, they let us know that it's airborne, right? Pisces has been retrograde. So all of these planets, that are still retrograde, when they, once they go forward, there's going to be a release of issues for the liars and the illusionist. And then there's going to be a release for those that have been working towards the better good of humanity. Yeah. Um, how you see that better good is up to you. Um, I do think that people need to look at how Uranus um, works with Saturn to change their mind. You may have children in your house with Uranus or 
I'm even thinking about um, Taurus energy. Taurus energy is stubborn, but it, it does have a, a liberation because Venus is a part of it. And then there's, a, you know, Libra in the seventh house. So when you look at Venus energy and Uranus, um, I don't think that it always goes together very well, but it is adaptable spiritually. The point that I'm making is, is Venus is about love and it's peculiar because it's an air sign and then it's an earth sign. And Uranus is a fixed sign, but I believe that it's water um, as well. I, I just do because it's aqua. Um, therefore, it is a unique um, energy that has birthed the paradigm of all of the other um, planets. And if it comes in and it ushers in Aquarius, breakdown, the breakdown of health, the breakdown of a system, you cannot go to work, no more money is flowing. Think about what this planet is able to do energetically. And we also feel freer about talking about what it does and that it is acclimated to the Bible and that we don't care what people say that um, we blaspheme it. We don't care. I don't care because it's like, Teach me something that's going to profit me then and the people. Or shut your ass up. Because I'm tired of your illusions and masking. John Gray, you, you talking out because you got problems. Now you saying that? Now, I ain't saying that I'm judging you, but I'm just looking at you and your BS. All the money you done made off of people. You understand? Yeah, I don't know who definitely. John Gray is. I do. Yeah. Yes, I am. Do not teach and preach something that you ain't experienced uh, yourself. I mean, that me, yeah. go to the Bible. I'm going to teach you. In there, Deuteronomy, it says, I, I give you the, the power to obtain wealth. God will give you the power to obtain wealth, but you also need to know that you need a budget. And you need a damn job. And I'm saying it with emphasis because break the illusion. Until you believe hard enough that you don't have to work and God will definitely send money through you because we are money, then you're going to have to go out and get a job or create one. And it is according to, you know, the process of life that you were brought here for. I definitely believe that we can sit and meditate and money can come to us from the north, the south, the east, and the west. But I'm not going to tell people that don't know that way of bringing money through them to do that because it would be a setup to possibly lo lose if they don't have faith to do that. You just sit there. Right. right. Okay. And I've been around prophets that you know, I want to say that they, they said, well, you know, you know, $1,000 for this and that. The problem that they have with people not liking them after that is that the people that gave them their rent and their light billing, and they believed that they was going to get that right back. Seed time and harvest work. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So if you want to support the cause that I'm in, then you give it. Don't don't try and make me a liability for you because I do have, you know, a good cause. But then the people that I am around are my cause. You know, I support just as well. And too many of our churches and our leaders are about themselves, such as John Gray. Don't come on YouTube talking that mess. Don't, nobody don't want to hear it. Liberty University, you and your, your wife, don't come on here talk. Y'all got all of this here money. Y'all being exposed because people, you should be giving to the people. Freedom. Don't be taking nothing. Universities are going to be exposed even more. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm going to shut this down. I need to go and get something to eat. And um, so next week, see how we going.
God bless y'all. Thank you. This was very insightful. Thank you. Thank you guys for your encouragement. Thank you for your help and even the teachings you guys give. All right. So um, I'll see y'all next Wednesday. Thank you. Yes, All right. God bless. Thank you. Good night, Miss Kim. Good night, Miss Kim. Good night, everyone. Good night.